This first song comes from Psalm 1. Psalm 1, put to music, all right?
promises that when we come to Him, the old things are passed away, everything has become new, and in Him we are new creations. He says, I will change your name. I will change your name. Fountain sea. 
God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son to whosoever. That means me, everybody in this room, everybody in the world. You love each of us. Tonight as we look at uh, Rahab, her life, her background, her past, we might see ourselves in her, although the sin might be different, but we might see ourselves in her. Help us to find the faith that she found. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. Amen. And all the time. Amen. Let Jesus be seen in 2016. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thanks to... Oh, excuse me. All right. You're on the motorcycle, raise your hand. Oh, we got one over here. We got one over here. Go there. I'm on the motorcycle. You know, it's, it's great to be loved. Elijah called me. He said, Pastor God, leave your bike in the garage and keep it nice and clean. I'm going to ride to keep the streak alive so that we hit 287. I rode anyway. Not that I didn't trust you, but fail safe. And this young lady rode. Thank you. Nice to have you. All right. Anybody got a birthday today? You're going to need free at Submasters if today's your birthday. All right. No birthday today. That's where we're going. Submasters. And I gave you false information last week because I was given false information. Okay. Uh, I told you last week that Bikers and Debate Group was the last time at Olson's. Uh, that is false. This Wednesday is the last one. Bikers and Debate Group, you get free hot dogs, free coffee. Uh, from Marvin Lisa Olson and you can buy their goodies okay although Paul Faust and I will not buy their goodies thanks to the weight loss challenge and if you'd like to sponsor us for the Christmas bag there's forms out there or you can just throw some money in the big jug all right it's time for us to start giving you a heads up that on Monday November the 7th from 5 until 8 o'clock if you are a veteran you will get a free meatball sub dinner and if you are not a veteran it will cost you six dollars okay Little people are also free, even though obviously they're not veterans. Um, and anything that uh, above what our cost is, and our cost is not going to be much because Submasters, the place we're going tonight, is donating the sauce and he's donating the meatballs. He's donating the rolls too, Wayne? Yeah. He's donating the rolls too. So we're going to throw in some salad. The ladies from our church here are making uh, desserts to go with everything. So we won't have a lot of overhead. So those who come in and pay $6 to eat, that money will go to the Christmas bag. And I would remind you that the Submaster's place we're going, he runs a thing where uh, you can go in and give him a few dollars and he'll put certificates up on the bulletin board that a veteran can go in and pull one down and, and, and spend it. Uh, I have already made a $100 donation on behalf of Biker Church. There's 10 $10 certificates over there on the board for people to use. But I would encourage you if you go up there with us tonight or go in there anytime and give him a few bucks to put towards that program. All right? Is that it for that? That's it. That's it for that. Okay. So this piece of paper, and I have to take my glasses off to read it. You know what this represents? This represents, I typed out my sermon and lost it. And so sat down this afternoon and with pen in hand, tried to remember. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> so this is going to be shorter than what I had planned, obviously. Uh, but I think I can maybe get the main points in. All right, first place I want to go is right here, Hebrews 11.31. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. Now, this 11th chapter of Hebrews, if we were to go back and read all of it, which we will not do right now, uh, it lists heroes of the faith. You know, people like Moses and, and uh, Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and Sarah and Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and David, and Samuel, and the prophets. Rahab, the prostitute, is listed with people like Moses, and Abraham, and the others I just mentioned. 
Now, <clears throat> Rahab was what some people say is or work as it, what some people say is the oldest profession, uh, world's oldest profession. I don't really think that's the world's oldest profession. Um, I think farming and gardening was because <laughs> that's what Adam and Eve had to do, right? Had to take care of the garden, had to be farmers. And, uh, but <clears throat> that's kind of picked up that nomenclature that it's, it's the world's uh, oldest occupation or oldest profession, okay? Uh, Rahab, to use another word, was a harlot. Uh, to use another word, uh, Rahab was a woman of the evening. Uh, some people call them working girls. Now, one of the things that's interesting is the Bible does not try to hide what Rahab was. These aren't going to be up on the screen, but I'm just going to refer to them um, in case you want to write it down and fact check me. Tonight's the big debate, right? You're supposed to be fact checking when Hillary and, and Trump talk. Okay, so if you want to fact check me, uh, in Joshua 2.1, uh, it says, it talks about a prostitute named Rahab. In Joshua 6, verses 17 and 25, it refers to Rahab the prostitute. In James 2.25, it refers to Rahab the prostitute. Now, I have never met, nor have I ever known, a prostitute. But I can imagine what level of low self-esteem and opinion of yourself that you have to sink to to become a prostitute. You must really be think not much of yourself. Right? You must really not value yourself at all to do that. I imagine Rahab had given up all hope of ever having a better life and living a decent life. Uh, and we don't really know much about her before this. We do know that she lived in Jericho. How do we know that? Because that's the city, the spies that Joshua sent the spies to. They wanted to take down the city. Jericho had this big, huge uh, actually, it's a system of walls around it to keep any attackers from coming in. And he sent some spies. And somehow, and this is not uh, a surprise really, is it? Every man in town knew where Rahab lived. Oh, Rahab? Yeah, she's right over there, okay? <clears throat> so they find her. And I'm guessing she lived somewhere on the wall, near the wall, because... Uh, like I said, the, the spies didn't have any trouble finding her. And later on, we're going to talk about this in a minute. She was able to hang the scarlet cord out the window to protect the rest of her family. Okay. Now, one of the things you need to understand is everything that Rahab going against her in addition to her occupation, if that wasn't bad enough. Society back then didn't value women at all. Women were considered property. They were mistreated. If you want a, uh, uh, if you want a modern day lesson in what that's like, just Google uh, what the uh, Muslim religion, what their attitude is against their women. Okay. She also had this going against her. She was a Gentile, which simply means she was not a Jew. And God's promise was to Israel, the Jews. Right. She was also a pagan. Okay. But. Nobody is in a hopeless situation when it comes to God. Nobody is in a hopeless situation when it comes to God. An opportunity came to Rahab to turn her life around and do something, and she took it. She hid the spies. And then when word got out that, hey, you know, this wasn't a big deal. Hey, we saw a couple men going into Rahab's apartment. Yeah, no kidding. Happens every night. But we didn't recognize these guys. These guys are from someplace else. You should go check that out. So the king sends some of his guards over. And what does Rahab do? She lies. She says, oh, yeah, they went that way. When actually they were hiding at her place in the roof. Okay. She sends them on a wild goose chase. She demonstrated her faith in the God of Israel 
by what she did. As a result, Joshua and his army got the intelligence that they needed so that they were able to march around the city, the walls come down, and they took the city. And Rahab had made a deal with these guys. She said, look, when you guys come storming in, you got to, don't kill me. <laughs> okay. Don't kill my family. Okay. We need a marker. So the marker was the red, you know, you talked about today, you know, we're going down to Buffalo. Where's the red light district? Everybody knows what that means, right? That comes from this. The red cord. There's also some spiritual symbolism there. Story of the Passover. You know, the blood of the Lamb. Death angel comes in Egypt. And uh, the, the blood of the uh, Lamb without blemish. And they passed over and he played the firstborn there didn't die. Obviously also red or scarlet. Uh, the color of blood representing the blood of Jesus. Okay? So... I talked to you tonight, and I would say, other than my wife, I really don't know any of your backgrounds. I mean, I know you since I've known you, <laughs> okay? I don't really know what's in your past. It, it might be something shameful. Or you might be a fine, upstanding Christian, upstanding church member, uh, you know what, you just, you're just walking in here and you're like, yeah, you want to know what a Christian looks like? Look at me. One of the things I heard a long time ago that I've repeated I don't know how many times in all my years as a pastor, and I love this, the ground in front of the cross is level. We have a tiered platform here. We feature the stars, the bass player and the drummer. We put them up high where you can see them. <laughs> right? We want everybody to see that. Okay? We feature them up, you know, so you can see them. All right? The, the ground at the foot of the cross is level. And the point of that is, and I'm, I know you're smart enough to get this, but I want to say it anyway. Everybody's the same. I don't care if you've gone to Sunday school all your life. You know the books of the Bible. You can recite them off by heart, frontwards and backwards. You can recite the Apostles' Creed. You've been baptized and confirmed. And, and you know all the catechism of the church. And, or, if you've got a Rahab kind of past, when Jesus looks down, everybody is the same. There's nobody that's hopeless. I'd like you to grab a Bible out of the pew and uh, turn to the book of Matthew. I'm going to blow your mind. Okay? Uh, the very first chapter of the book of Matthew will be page 955. Now, the whole thing, okay, we're not going to try, this is why I want you to open your Bible, okay? I've got it all up there, all the verses I want to read, but I want you to look at your Bible, okay? The book of Matthew, chapter 1. Anybody need help? Everybody there? All there? All right? Good. Don't be embarrassed to ask for help, because I want you to see this. A record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez, the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Amminadab. Amminadab, the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was... Rahab eventually got married. She married Salmon. There's some theories that he was one of the spies <laughs> that went in. Okay? 
Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. So apparently Rahab was King David, a man after God's own heart, great, great grandma. David was the father of Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, according to the Bible, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Salmon, Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam, the father of Abijah, Abijah, the father of Asa, Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram, Jehoram, the father of Uzziah, Uzziah, the father of Jotham, Jotham, the father of Ahaz, Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Ammon, Ammon, the father of Josiah, Josiah, the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile of Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shiltiel. Shiltiel, the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the I don't know nobody, nobody names their kids Zerubbabel anymore. It's a pretty cool name. <laughs> What's your name, little boy? Zerubbabel. <laughs> Zerubbabel, the father of Abiad. Abiad, the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor. Azor, the father of Zadok. Zadok, the father of Achim. Stick with me. Achim, the father of Eliud, Eliud, the father of Eleazar, Eleazar, the father of Mathen, Mathen, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has a prostitute in his family tree changed, exercised her faith when the spies came and heard the stories about the God of Israel, decided to believe, brought the city down, saved herself and her family, ended up getting married, having children, was in the family heritage of Jesus our Savior. Not ever think your situation is hopeless or that a decision you make now will not affect generations to come. It will. I implore you to decide to follow Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, again, I thank you, I thank you, that whosoever means me. Some people think that I, as a pastor, and a lot of other pastors and priests, that somehow we were born holy, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, we never got off and anything wrong, and nothing could be further from the truth. I don't know a pastor that doesn't have things in their background that they're ashamed of, including me. Somehow, the devil whispers in our ear, our situation's hopeless, we can't change, we can't turn it around, and it wouldn't matter anyway when all of those are lies. So my prayer tonight is Every single one of us would realize there is room at the cross and we can turn around if we haven't already. I ask this in Jesus' name.